Hello everyone and welcome to Eorzea Armoire, a series about the background of some of Heidelin's more epic and dense weapons, armor, and artifacts. We'll be investigating the lore of these items, both within Final Fantasy XIV, the Final Fantasy franchise in general, as well as the amazing and sometimes obscure real-world people, events, and artifacts upon which they are based. Gram Balmung Nortung. Three names for perhaps the single most significant sword to modern Western culture. More deadly than Colored Bulg, and more notorious than Excalibur. The legend of Nortung is inextricably tied to the Volsunga saga, a 13th century Icelandic prose based on earlier Eddic poems recounting the rise and fall of the Volsung clan, which has since been most notably appropriated into the High German Nibelungenlied, Tolkien's The Legend of Sigurd and Gudrun, and of course Richard Wagner's operatic opus, The Ring des Nibelungen. Although each of these texts vary in some details, the overarching role of Nortung is much the same, and it is this story which we shall today pursue. Nortung was forged by the master smith Valent of Germanic and Old Norse mythology, whom forged the armor of Beowulf, the Almus, the Caliburn, Katana and Durandal, as well as the sword Nortung which was for the longest time wielded by Odin himself. Odin attended a wedding in the Hall of Volsung, disguised as he so often was as a cloaked, one-eyed vagrant. Mysterious as his purpose so often was, Odin plunged a beautiful sword into the tree at the center of the hall, announcing that any man that could pull it free would keep it as a gift. The only man that could do so was Sigmund, son of Volsung. The king of nearby Gotland was filled with such envy for the sword that he later betrayed the Volsung clan, imprisoned Sigmund, and murdered his father. Sigmund eventually escaped, retrieved the sword, and years later avenged the death of Volsung and reclaimed his lands. During a war decades later over these lands, a cloaked one-eyed man appeared on the battlefield and challenged Sigmund. This old man, once again Odin in disguise, shattered Nortung into pieces and Sigmund fell. Odin's cruel game was evidently finished and Sigmund, with his dying words, bequeathed the fragments of Nortung to his unborn son Sigurd, known to modern Germans as their ancestor hero Siegfried. Sigurd's mother remarried a king, Alf, and Sigurd grew up in his court as a foster child of the king's smith, Regin. This is where the stories of the Volsunga saga, the Nibelungenlied, and Wagner's opera begin to divide. Regin's father, Hreidmar, had once come to possess a great hoard of gold and treasure, gifted by the gods. The Volsunga saga says that this gold was payment for the accidental murder of Regin's brother, Otter, by Loki but Wagner tells that it was payment for the construction of the gods dwelling Valhalla, and for the blackmail of Hreidmar, who knew the secrets to the gods' immortality. Unfortunately, this treasure was stolen by Loki from the dwarf Andvari in the form of a ring which he possessed that could produce an unlimited supply of gold. Before handing it over, however, Andvari cursed the ring to bring doom upon any possessor, and the first possessor was to be Hreimdar. This was the account of the Volsinger saga and the Nibelungenlied, but Wagner amends the tale that the dwarf Andvari had himself stolen the gold from the Rhine Maidens, water nymphs of Wagner's invention, and from part of this gold had forged the ring which could give the wielder power over the whole world. This ring, the Andvaranaut, was unknown to the gods in the older tales, but in Wagner's is handed over with incredible reluctance by Odin, whom all the same plots for generations to recover the ring. I know that these variants are difficult to follow, but what is important here is that the ring corrupted the mind and spirit of Fafnir, son of Hreidmar and brother to Regin. Fafnir killed his father for the ring, taking the entire horde for himself and the ring's influence slowly transformed him into a terrible, greedy and monstrous dragon. Now Regent, as Sigurd's foster father, knew that the lad possessed the strength and spirit of his father Sigmund and devised a plan by which he might come to retrieve the treasure and the ring denied to him by his brother Fafnir, by seducing Sigurd with the promise of gold. Sigurd did take to the idea of slaying a dragon, but not for the material reward. Sigurd wanted very much to know the experience of fear, a feeling which had never once attended him in his life. 
To craft a weapon that could pierce the hide of a dragon was, however, well beyond Regin's skill. Sigurd was a keen hunter and quickly broke every sword that Regin forged for him. He knew of only one that might give Sigurd the edge he needed, the long-shattered Nortung, sword of Sigmund forged by Valent. Sigurd brought the shards of Nortung to Regin, but he was unable to work the metal at all. Frustrated, Sigurd took over the forge and despite his inexperience with metallurgy, began to make progress and Regin realized that it was the sword itself and not his skills which had eluded him. Regin was a man plagued by greed and cowardice, but Sigurd was over full of the glorious, fearless spirit that had first allowed his father to so easily pull Odin's sword from the tree Barnstock, and so Sigurd prevailed with a song in his heart. Sigurd slew the dragon Fafnir and ate his heart, which granted him powers of magical insight. He could understand the speech of the birds, and the birds warned him that Regin intended to kill him for the ring and the gold. And so Sigurd returned to his foster father and decapitated him with Nortung before he could act upon this dark purpose. The rest of the Volsunga saga, the Nibelungen lead, and particularly the Ring des Nibelungen, tell of the tragedies which follow the curse attending the ring. In Wagner's tale, Brynhilde, a Valkyrie and daughter of Odin, whom had attempted to intervene and save the life of Sigurd's father, Sigmund, had been stripped of her immortality and placed in a magical stasis by Odin, which Sigurd later broke, soon falling in love with Brynhilde and giving her the ring as a token of his affection. After they were forced to part ways and Sigurd had his memory of Brynhilde forcibly removed, desire for the ring slowly consumed everyone around her resulting in countless murders, including that of Sigurd himself, after which Brynhilde cast the ring back into the depths of the Rhine and committed suicide by throwing herself onto Sigurd's funeral pyre. Wagner and Tolkien both worked with many of the same sources, and we can see in this tale much of the inspiration for Tolkien's own all-corrupting ring of power, as well as Smaug's model in Fafnir and Narsil, the broken Sword of Kings, which was reforged in Aragorn's blade, Anduril. Sigurd's sword and the Bane of Fafnir has found its way into the Final Fantasy franchise many times, as Balmung, as Gram in Final Fantasy XI, and now as Nortung, Anima of the Dark Knight. It is a sword worthy of the Warrior of Light and of the dragon-slaying motif of Heavensward. All we need to see in game now is Fafnir himself. And that's it for Nortung and this week's armoire. Thanks for watching and please keep in mind that my telling of this legend comes from sources that stretch from the 13th century to the early 20th century and so are fairly difficult to reconcile into coherent tale without favoring some elements of one source and other elements of another. As always, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below or any recommendations or requests you have for the series. Please like and subscribe, share the video with your Dark Knight friends if you'd like to support the channel. But for now, I'm Ethis and this has been Eorzea Armoire.